guests who are not necessarily on the program like Ubabu uh, Ukumbi to come to give us a quick message. I know that uh, he needs to, to go. So a quick message of uh, solidarity before, before I start. But also I want to ask you comrades to come a little to the front man. You know you are, you are sitting too far away from, from us. Uh, our movement is supposed to be a socialist movement where the people and leadership are together. There are no classes uh, in the movement that uh, we are launching today. I had listened to Abu Gumbi speak and counsel us about the revolution and I was moved. And we thought it would be good to bring him here today to give you also some words uh, that he shared with us in this difficult path that we are traveling. You know, when Che Guevara and Comrade Fidel Castro started the revolutionary process in Cuba, there were only about a hundred people. So here in this hall, we have more people than those who started the Cuban Revolution. We are more than those who started the Cuban Revolution. We are going to start the Azanian Revolution. And when we are done, uh, this country is going to be as black as you are. Right now, it's, it's shocking. When you look at the spring box and so on, or you look at our towns, they, they remain very white. Sanbonani! Shalom, shalom lechem. In Hebrew, I know Hebrew has been removed from you by the Gentiles. When the Gentiles were giving the land of North East Africa, you knew that the North East Africa was the Middle East. But because of the liars and the deceivers who were pushed by the regime of that time, Shalom unto you. Peace be upon to you. Hallelujah. Abandonabasekaya. We have been stolen. Our mind has been stolen. Our leaders, they do not know and identify Africa anymore. When you see them ruling, they wish so much to do better for Africa, but it will be impossible for a person who has been removed from Africa to be able to build Africa. All what they do and what they build is Europe in Africa. For their mind has been Europeanized. They are no longer our people. But they are our people when you look at them in the face of values. When we voted them into power, we thought that they would do something better because they look like you. But 
But where is Africa today? Whenever you hear the people coming from all over the continent of Africa, they say it's South Africa, it's well built. You know what do they mean? They mean it's so much of a Europe than Africa. I'm very happy to hear my brothers here talking about the, the revolution of the African people, the land to be brought back to the rightful people. But is it that easy? The problem is the sponsorship. As soon as the sponsors come in to put their money, they begin to control. They begin to twist your arm. Today you are having a problem with the Guptas and the Americans and the English are putting their feet in because they want to come in. Not because they are for you. Nobody cares about you. Leadership crisis. Our leaders. Who taught our leaders? Which institution, which is the African institution that we can bank on and say this is ours, this can produce our leadership? No. You have to go to the White House to be whitified. My brothers, I'm so happy to see you today striving to do right. It's not easy. The only two forces, good and evil, the systems in the continent of Africa, they were forced to promote the demon crazy. Or else you're not going to be a part of the United Nations. Where is the United Nations? In New York. Why in New York? If it's for everybody. Who can judge Bush for any wrong that they can do? Nobody. Why? He is the boss of the United Nations. Now don't you ever lie to yourself when you hear anybody talking about the United Nations that you are the part and parcel of. You are the puppets there. You ought to do nothing but to toe a line. My brother here, when you talk about I'm going to conduct the service, it's a different kind of service. It's a consciousness service. It's to bring the people of God back to their origin. To know who they are. To know what did happen to them as a race. Why we are in the condition where we are at today. Why us? Nobody cares. The masters in the education. They do not know that it's a Shabbat day today, but it's written because the master said to them, they ought to honor Sunday, the worship of the sun. Super intelligent, so-called. My brothers, I love you and I pray for this to go on and on and on and be strong, but be strong enough not to be bought. Be for your people for real. Crisis on leadership, pushing one another, everybody want to be a leader. Leaders are born, leaders are not made. Shalom, shalom. Tokazani, my freak. When I was asked to come and give a short little speech, I asked myself, why? Why am I here? And this has been a passionate subject for me in particular, the subject of us as a people. Who are we? Saboban. Who are we? A geographic location called South Africa. With no sense of self, with no vision of who we are, where we want to go. We inherited a rainbow. That thing that's in the sky that's going to happen just after the rain. That's what we inherited with a pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. And we were told that everyone can access that little pot of gold as long as you accept this rainbow. 
This rainbow, which we did not sign up for, which we did not negotiate, we were never told about, we were never informed, oh yeah, we're going to fight and after the fight we are going to have a rainbow, we were never asked, where does it come from after the Anglo-Bur War? When eventually the Africaners and the English decided to come together to try and find some peaceful, settled negotiation, it was their rainbow. The Union, the Fear Clear, their rainbow. Our leaders, Apa Mzanzi Africa, put on suits, got on a ship, and went to England, 1909, to go and ask the Queen, not ha -ha, our land is related, no. They were going to ask, please, can we be part of the rainbow? Amanda, do we believe we to Amanda away to Do we believe it? Because if we don't believe it, this whole exercise is pointless. Do we believe it? So they went off and asked the queen for a slice of the rainbow so that they can at least hold a little bit of the power in their little corner pockets of Mzansi, Africa. And when the queen said, nah, sorry, they came back. And that's how our governing party was born. Out of a realization that Aish, they said no to us getting a slice. And so from then on was a war. And when I say war, no, it was a little battle to keep begging for inclusion. And finally, guess what we got? the inclusion. We've got the rainbow now. We have been assimilated. This vision of, oh, okay, now we can go to the nice restaurants too. Oh, now we can live in the nice places too and drive the nice cars. But ultimately, who are still the maids? All we are aspiring to be is to be good workers, to be good blacks so that we can aspire to the little pot of the rainbow. But who are we? As a people, what is our soul as a people? I mean, it, it didn't even get to a point where So much so that even when Bafana Bafana go and play a game somewhere, they are playing for South Africa. They can't even, those of who, who died, whose blood and whose bones are in our ground. We can't even give a name to this place whenever we ask for anything. We can't say Wazani. When we pray, we are also praying to some elusive somebody who does not even look like us and I am pointing at my own skin too. Because yes, I know that excludes me sometimes, Ngoba, I am not black enough. So we need to be examining who are we and we need to look back at where we come from and when we look at where we come from please let us be disillusioned Uguti, uh, no this is how uh, umvenda or umzulu or these are all minor things that are kept there to divide us and I would also like to just touch on a patriarchy please if I may because a lot of my friends were asking, the black movement is quite patriarchal. The black movement excludes women. And I would like to touch on that particularly because I'm not just black first. I'm also a woman. I'm also gay. And what that means for me is we need to be guarding how we become the oppressors ourselves as we try to attain our own liberation. How do you liberate when all you are doing is oppressing another? And if our personal is political, that means we need to be living our personal on a daily basis. And if we are living our personal on a daily basis, my brothers, we cannot be abusing our sisters. And we need to be standing up when our sisters are being abused. No, I'm a strong black woman, so I am not needing protection from my brothers. No, I can protect you too. 
let us protect each other. This journey only works when we are together. This journey will not work when one is trying to be above another. Because in the same way that we as black people complain and call out white superiority and white privilege, we sisters see brothers exercising their main privilege over the ownership of our bodies. It's the same thing, brothers. And so we need to be guiding ourselves as we move forward with this movement. This movement, this little seed that is being planted today, that is going into the ground, that we need to have a vision. While the English were playing chess and putting together the Africa that they want to see, that they own, the Chinese play mahjong. That's a hell of a lot more complicated game, which means they are able to think a hundred steps forward. And so what they have planned over two centuries ago is what they are implementing right now. Systematically, slowly, because they have a vision. What is our vision? How do we reimagine this Africa les to? How do we see it going forward? Is it in the same way where we are assimilating? and wanting to live in the nice houses. No, we've got to get out of our own comforts in order to achieve this that we say is ours. So that when we do go anywhere else in the world, we are going there with pride. We are going there with a sense of knowing who we are. And one of the only ways we can build a movement like this one is for us not only to examine ourselves, to educate ourselves, to read brothers. Please, ETV is not doing it for you. I've been working in television for the last 20 years. I've left television because all they are doing is very clever, is brainwashing and making us believe in things that are out there. In this rainbow, this non-existent pot of gold. We're listening to music that is telling us that you can wake up in a Bugatti. No. Because we are not building. We are not working towards building. And when I say that, I don't mean waking up at five in the morning, you're seven zelum lungu, and come back, and that's what you are doing in this wheel, that cycle that goes on and on and on and on. No. I mean, what are we building? What are we building? Without the finances, without the bless us, comrades, one of the only things that we are capable of doing is to teach each other. Each one, teach one, let's go back to the basics. This is how Biko started a movement. This is how movements begin, is by each one making sure that wherever we are, each one is teaching each one. But not just that, to inspire, inspire, we can. We can, we need to be building our own. We need to be starting our own industries because each and every one of us here has very many different talents that are inherent, that are sitting here, that are just waiting to be unleashed. And yes, we talk about funding and funders. In actual fact, this is one of the only countries that have the biggest capacity and the biggest support for entrepreneurs. You just need to actually start something, brothers and sisters, because we don't own shit. All we do is consume. We don't own. How do we even begin to think we can own this land if we can't even build simple things that we own? We can do this. Start small. Own. Patent it. Register it. Own. Because we can't think we can own land when we can't even own the little things. A pen. Let's build. Let us build. Comrade Nyabong. Africa. My boy. My boy. Yeah, Africa. Today, Nico and Sobukwe are found among the radical youth of our country in their songs and in their actions. I urge that principled unity of the socialist movements be given serious consideration in this conference. We must build a socialist bloc 
if we are to survive the current ideological fog and rescue Miko and Sobukwe from this suffocating political climate in which even white liberals lay claim to black political heritage and even make money out of it. Let us connect the live wires of protest and black rage from fees must fall to release upper political prisoners campaign from 12,500 rands demand in Marikana to the living wage struggle of farm workers in the Western Cape from anti-racism action campaign to buy black and end white arrogance national black solidarity consumer boycott. We must crisscross the breadth and the length of South Africa in search of like-minded people until a Zanian front is born where the only black agenda is unapologetically the return of the people's land. Andile's detractors, they say that Andile does not want to be led and that is why he left the EFF. Now I think this is the time to prove them wrong. I dare you, Andile, to do what you did with SNI. We are here again, facing the choice of continued social death with no end, or taking things into our hands and going down with our captors, end quote. When I read this from Andile's writings, this reminded me of that Bible narrative of Samson who had his eyes gouged out by the Philistines. When he was being made a spectacle, he asked a little boy to guide him to the pillars which held this, this building. And it reads in Judges chapter 16, then Samson called to the Lord and said, Oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me just this time. Oh God, that I may at once avenge. This is where the title of my presentation comes from. Blacks must be avenged for. That I may avenge of the Philistines for my two ears, to my two eyes. Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which, he, how, on which the house rested and braced himself against them. The, the one with his right and the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Let me die with white people. Let me die with white power. And he bent with all his might so that the house fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he killed in his life. This picture depicts the life of black people under white supremacy. Our eyes have been gorged. The eyes of our minds. We are wounded beyond measure. We have lost everything. So now, blacks have nothing else to lose but their chains. Let us find the middle pillars and bring the house down with all the Philistines. Black people must be avenged. The, law, the land is not in parliament. The land is occupied by thieves. Long live the spirit of Sobukwe, long live. Long live the spirit of Mantubiko, long live. Long live the spirit of Thomas Sankara, long live. Forward with free quality education, forward. Forward with black agenda, forward. Down with the blessers, down. Comrades, stand up and give a big round of applause to Pastor Skosana. This was a powerful message. As we remain standing, I'd like to ask Andy, uh, Anda, Anda Toso. Anda Toso is he here. Please come forward, Anda. As Anda is coming forward, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Comrade Bandile to start a revolutionary song as Anda is coming forward. And uh, very soon we're going to have uh, Andy Mkutama come and address us and state what is this black agenda. <laughs> Blessings out 
today is that free the mind take the land so the message of pastor Kosa, kosana resonates with us we agree 100 percent parliament is not going to give us land in parliament we call each other honorable members <laughs> what kind of people are these who insist that uh, they must call each other honorable sister bev this year we also thank you for not just the words you have given today, but your commitment. Long commitment to the liberation of black people, and black people, all of them. We also want to welcome comrades from other revolutionary organizations who are here. I also, earlier on and yesterday, was told that there are also delegates from the United States of America who are here from the radical black tradition. Today, nine months after we have made a call as BLF that we need a new revolutionary possibility. Nine months after, I'm told that a, a child takes nine months to come to term, to, to be born. It's exactly nine months after we have said, let us start a new possibility. So today we are officially launching our movement and we are presenting the black agenda to our people. We are the only people, as black people, who do not have an agenda of our own. In 1955, here in this country, here, not far away, in a place called Clip Town, black people there converged like us. White people gave us a document they called the Freedom Charter. It was not written by us. The leaders of the time of that organization did not even know where that organization came from, that document came from. We don't have an agenda. We are surprised 22 years later that we are at the bottom of everything in our own country. The reason is that's not your agenda. We're following other people's agendas. So today we are setting an agenda for black people. We are very lucky, and this came out of our conversations when we were moving around in the provinces. Our people said at the time, we have to build from scratch. And some of us were very reluctant. They said, you see, when you build a house, and when you finish, you're about to roof the house, you realize that the foundation is wrong. You have two options. The first option is to finish the house and bring your family inside and take the risk that the house is going to fall on them. The second option is to start from scratch. 
Now starting from scratch is difficult. Uferite di samen dagir. Uferite di dina. Budget hai saliteng. Matla afe dili. And they, we said, wait, you must start from scratch. We have chosen the difficult path of starting all over again. Because the revolution is a long-term project. Some people think you can do a, this thing of a revolution in my lifetime. You must be careful because it might not happen in your lifetime. But you must continue as if it's going to happen in your own lifetime. You must organize, you must agitate, you must fight, you must get arrested. Members of BLF, you must get arrested. Members of EABLF, you must get arrested. If you are a member of BLF and you have not been arrested, is a problem. You are not a full member yet. Uh, comrade Tura, where are you? He's getting arrested there. Let's give that comrade a big hand of applause. Another one is Lindsay. Where is Lindsay? Or oh, he's still on the way from Cape Town. These comrades get arrested every week. Now they get arrested in the morning. We must put some bail money. They get out in the afternoon. They are arrested again. Because the struggle has not stopped. They go back to the same place where they were arrested and to continue. So a mem if you want to be a member of BLF, you must be ready to be arrested. Some people, their struggle is to vote only. They stop there. Here, yeah. you must also get arrested. Everybody must know the pain of tear gas and rubber bullet. Because the struggle, that's what it requires. It's important to say that we're standing on the foundation of giants such as Moshoeshwe, Sikukuni, Mangoba, Bambata, Gugunyani, Sobu Kwebiko, Nehanda, Nzinga, Achimau, the young Solomon Mashangu, and Andrew, and Andrew Ezondo. These are the giants that we're standing on their shoulders. Siatsi Mashinini was 19 years old when he led the Black Power Movement from Suwetu. Tiazi Mashinini was a young person when he led masses and thousands of our people without guns at the time to say enough is enough on the apartheid regime. We are better organized. We should do better than that. We thank Nkrumah, we thank Nyerere, we thank Lumumba, we thank Cabral, we thank Samora for laying the foundations. But we start also that document with a poem which is not a poem, a call by the Mau Mau of Kenya. And let me read what the, 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 the call of the Mau Mau says. They say, there is no success without a struggle. What are you waiting for? Where are you when the struggle for land is on? What are you waiting for? Have you not joined? What are you waiting for? Even if you think you are rich, what are you waiting for? Land is truly our national wealth. What are you waiting for? What sort of man are you? What sort of a woman are you? What are you waiting for? Or are you waiting? Are you, are you one with the whites? What are you waiting for? Let us unite in struggle. What are you waiting for? Unity is the strength. We're struggling for our liberation. We are. What are you waiting for? We'll stop there. The Mau Mau of Kenya are the people of dreadlocks. They had vowed not to cut their hair until Kenya was liberated from their colonialists. Mau Mau was led by Diden Kimati, who was captured by the British. The British then murdered him, and then they made sure that the people of Kenya who were following the revolutionary movement did not know his body, where his body was buried. Was buried. We are not free. Black people are not free in South Africa, are not free in uh, Africa, they are not free in the world. That's the premise we move from as the black agenda. We also know that political parties in our country are very apologetic. They don't want to say it very clearly that all the land in white people's hand is stolen land. The land that in the hand of Fat Vetman says is Almal Christian, that's the land that Fanswart men say. And we 
you want all of it. I'm not a who to edit. I want to edit a color. You can't see the lena ka mosa obore. You can't pass steering wheel in Marco Leno Kata Magayona. You can't pass Hore. What's I eighty percent there? Color you pay twenty percent. Nyaba Hart. I can't go like ya. It is your kai moto ya kule. Si funa yonke. Umlung who puff there after Kaya funa usale South Africa. Si zamnika na in lift ngoba imoto nga ye tu. We are absolutely clear as black first, land first. There is no revolution, there is no liberation without the land question. And we make the point also very important, black people shall be first again. We must go back to our history. We were first people, white people, our children. They were not there when we were there. We gave them life. They came back and they oppressed us. White people are from us. Everything they know is from us. We had universities when they were here in Europe eating raw meat. They came to learn from our universities. But all that information, all that knowledge, they have put it under a rock so that we don't know the truth. You know, I was surprised. I, was, I met a Greek person the other day, somebody from Greece. I said to them, you know that we are the ones who taught your philosophers. I said, mathematics come from Africa. Philosophy, your grades... Socrates and them were taught in, on our, in our universities. This Greek person did not know this. They just say the Greeks are great. They don't say they were students of black people in Africa. Now, we are going to go back to that knowledge. To say to black people, we are great as you are. Oh, Masifuna, inkulego ngempele, kumele si pege na lomlu ngola ekanda. Oh, mama, si di sifuna umshaba lomlu ngolo ekanda, kapagati kwena. Uti nuzwenza numshab. The destruction of black people was not just the, the theft of land, but they also stole our minds and they stole our souls. Look at how we treat Saudi. Saudi says, here, this guy from the SABC, 90% local content. 90% local content. You know what black people say? Saudi Hana degree, Saudi Hana metric. Gumlungu, up and talk. Is the white man talking? Because the white man said to you, for you to claim to be educated, you need a degree. But look at the white man, how smart he is. Where you must you get the degree? From the university. Who runs the university? The white man. So the white man says to you, "Our funda anga ngaga ala el paper, el paper to el funa ake kufune kuzi apagum." All our universities are white, all of them. Even the one in Venda is white, because if you look at the curriculum, what they teach, they teach the white man's education. So we say to Saudi, some of us, Saudi is a good thing you have done. Ninety percent, of course, yeah. We will see if there's not enough content. If there's not enough content, very nice. Our musicians all year must be recorded so that they can uh, uh, contribute to the content. We must also warn the SABC and South. When we say local content, we don't say South Africa. We mean the African continent and the black diaspora. The black continent and the black diaspora. Saudi, what's up? Kate, I'm back in your mo mo content. Tanya, ninety year how? Over time, my work on the hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob, Mali. Over back in your one, you can feel a Kiba tu baba tu. Kiba na ba Jesus. Ba ile ba utuwa. Mona Africa. Kema huwa asi shoho asatani. Wherever a black person find themselves, even in Europe, those who contribute to culture must be part of that content. Mahua can have about maybe five percent day. Like it's about a fellow only ten percent. You marry that one. It's okay to listen to Bach from time to time. The point I'm making is a simple one. The white education has made us to look down upon black people. When Saudi is doing something good and politics, the politics is there. So no matter what BLF, I'm not talking about Saudi or wrong. Since I can't follow the law, Saudi or wrong. So you stop thinking. This movement is not going to do that. When the leaders are wrong, our members must be able to say you are wrong. If we only want you to agree with us, we are not building a movement, we are building the ANC outside of the ANC. <laughs> then what the 
of us must, must not go join the alien singers. Why must we be here when we're doing the same, exactly the same thing? When uh, uh, the leader speaks, <laughs> all of you now must agree. Must. If you don't agree, must, we are going to also fire you, we are going to expel you. And uh, we are going to say attack on you. <laughs> no. We're building a revolutionary movement. None of us are born leaders. All of us are leaders because at the time we are being chosen to lead for the particular time, for the particular reason. We hope this movement will create its own leaders who are clear on the politics of a revolution, are clear on the ideology of our movement. Then Togozo Kwabe there in Cape Town, he was there and he said to a white waitress, uh, the white waitress wanted a tip. This brother said, no, before we tip, bring back the land. Before we pay any tip, the matter of this waitress, a white person, cried. And then, you know what is a shocking thing about the white person in our heads? The first person to start a campaign to give that white woman money was a black person. After a week, that white woman had more than 20, no, 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 200,000 contributions. Because black people and white people are doing the white thing. Ronamo biele feruko pa barefe chelte o bagasi refili sende. Mar le kuala la dike lady. Because le kuala le lika mo choho nyaro na rinzisa chelte Rafa Mosadwa liburu chelte nti tata yana reipa se le fa le fa se la rona resalu lu ope. On the housing question, the black agenda is very clear, and I'm going to run quickly because I don't have time. We say we follow the analysis of Pastor Colas Kosana when he says. Our townships are hell. We say the first principle is to end townships and squatter camps. We have to end townships and squatter camps. <laughs> Other organizations say you must build more townships. Bahufa RDP house. Our people are so destroyed by the white system today, we are fighting for an RDP house. You see what the white man has done to us. Today our struggle is for an RDP house. South Africa, the RDP house. White people look at us and they laugh. Even the revolutionary so-called revolution movement do the same thing, we'll build you more RDP houses. We say, the black agenda says, end the township. Depopulate the township. Redesign the houses. These things were not good for human occupation. And we also say that squatter camps must go and we must have a time frame for that. Why not? In five years, every black person must live in a proper house. Why is that not possible? Now, here's the problem. What are we going to do with the problem of overhousing of white people? In South Africa, we have a problem. Black people have no houses. White people are overhoused. Black people have no houses. One white person owns 10 rooms. And there's one that owns 10 rooms. 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 It is the white madness which we must avoid because naturally we, are, we, we try to mimic white people. So what are we going to do about that? In Alexander, people have no houses. In Santen, white people have too much houses. What are we going to do? The black agenda says, well, we are going to come and count your rooms. And if there are extra rooms you don't use, we are going to tax you. Take this money to go buy a house or build a house for a black person. We are going to tax them for overhousing. If they don't want to be taxed, okay, we have another solution for their problem of overhousing. Let us help white people. We have a problem of overhousing. We have a problem of no housing. So how do we solve your problem? We tax you so that we can also have houses. Failure to that, let's subdivide your homes. Okay, we have 10, ten rooms, you use five, no problem. Tatum kize, No problem. We tax you. You don't want to be taxed. You want the 10 rooms. No problem. We have another solution if you don't want to be taxed. 
we bring tatum kize ne family i can next dog wa ku sifaki donga bendlini you are now neighbors and in this way we also end the problem of racism <laughs> when babum kize come from work there he knocks at your house emma kola nukunjani now you see what people they claim was they want to live with us right we are giving them an opportunity our priority is not to fill physical spaces we have big ideas big ideas to liberate black people and to fill our minds and heads we want to fill up the heads with good revolutionary ideas and we have big ideas part of these big ideas about the housing question remember now we, we destroyed the township we also subdivide and tax now we have a, a third proposal let us build something beautiful for black people let us build new settlements for black people let us call them community centered settlements let's think about it it is possible it can be done where 300 houses around a massive community center there's a library there's a clinic there is schools there is a laundry there is communal even dining when our children come from school they go there there we collectively take care of them men and women we cook for everybody amama in this way women in this way this burden of raising children and cooking for us and not being able to go to political meetings and doing their own thing also will be resolved the work of the home has become the work of mama in this way we have domesticated the women so we say let us build a different settlement in this settlement you'll have your clinic you'll have your computer center you'll have your gym you'll have your theater you'll have even tinabasela you can call no data so sell up no mama guess my business you're selling in that you problem we are saying we can build a new housing settlement that put black people first we have to close our eyes and we have to erase what we know today about how black people live and this idea of a community center settlement will be part of the pro but we know the ANC is not going to do it we know our f other friends are not going to do it because they are going to live in something and live in the township you know we also in this uh, black agenda says also it makes a very interesting proposal in south africa we have unemployed people they are also homeless or they have no the houses how is it that we don't take the program of building houses for people also to become a process of employment and skills development uh, but this is not rocket science right people need houses they are unemployed you building a house is not a difficult project but the problem is a tender so we must say no we don't want tenders people themselves the young people will learn how to build houses and they will imagine if we finish at kailicha if you can finish let me cook as a kailicha we go there we finish there and then we have skills we know how to do the whole thing we go to the villages we go to other spaces we do the same with the support of a revolutionary state on health there's a we have we've gone on to explain or the document explains we are not sick because you are we are not unwell because we've been bewitched we are unwell because white people are poisoning us do you know the food that we eat every day is poison white people poison us poison us when we sick they say they are healing us they poison us a bit more because even the medicine they give us is not there to make us well it makes you feel a little bit better then you become dependent on that medicine so they're making us slaves in south africa if you just go to mil mil it's 99 percent gmo gmo is genetically modified organism they're putting things into this maze to poison you now the anc has allowed chicken from america to come the chicken from america is certified to be cancerous so you black people you eat chicken and you eat pap every day you eat gmo <laughs> You are becoming genetically modified yourself. I think the reason why we are afraid of white people is the pap that we eat. In there, I'm sure the GMO they put something for us. here. Look at us, how many we are. Imagine if we decide now. Yeah, look here, man. Let's just go to town there. And go to the suburbs there. 
and start knocking. Knock. Us here. Spanish. Knock, knock. Hey, people, when are you bringing that thing of ours? But we have, they, they feed us a genetically modified pub. Songa siki pub. Fute nyinto wa nguma kawikia. Om ngusho will save because Lam ngusho ko lambona, lambona lang hak. So we're not sick because they were, be, we were sick because the capitalist system is anti-black and is poisoning us. Black agenda says to us, firstly, we must go back to our own knowledge system. Indigenous knowledge system. We were feeding each other good food. And we as black people, where all of us understood what it means to live well and healthy. All of us. So the suggestion here that we must go back to that, that is the, now on education, this is an important one. Let me just ask the question. Since white people are here to oppress us, they took our land, they had mass murdered us, why do you think they build schools for us? It's because they love us. Why do they build universities for us? It is because they want us to get educated. No, they build these things because they wanted to create a black elite which is going to run our countries in the interest of white people. All of our education system is meant to make us servants of white people. A good example I will make, I always make, those of you who have listened, hear me speak before, you know this example of the education of the red. Uh, Chinwezu, Dr. Chinwezu from Nigeria tells how the African person has suffered. And he says it is the same as the education of the red. Impuku. Peba. When a rat in its natural state, peba, five sa taka taka na lik tuto ya di cards, five bona cards, ya tsaba. Impugu tanga fama ngake, imfundo, ya cards, kabo ni cards ya baleka. Gobi as balos and di kalo. This one is going to eat me. But now here's what a rat now, who gets education of the cat? If you take a rat. You educate it as a cat. The rat believes that it is a cat. When it sees itself, it sees a cat. Now here's the problem. And the cat, when it's full, it plays with the rat. There's no problem. The problem is one day, the cat is hungry. And the cat comes, and that rat, with the education of the cat, goes to give a hug to the cat. And that rat will end up in the belly of the cat. The reason we have been oppressed for so long and we are unable to liberate ourselves is because we imagine ourselves exactly the same way as our oppressors do. We think we are white. That is why we talk about the constitution. The constitution is the biggest trap. So in education we say, let us get rid of the education of the red. Let the now, of the cat, let the rat have their own education. And their education starts by saying, your enemy is the cat, run away. Your enemy is the cat and organize against the cat. Okay, we have a problem in South Africa and we su the suggestion from the black agenda. What are we going to do today? Because Abandon Abedu in our schools, they are doing so badly. The suggestion put forward is this. In the immediate, why don't we go to Zimbabwe and talk to Comrade Mugabe? And say, Comrade Mugabe, bring the O levels and A levels. Anyway, we don't have to do so. All the Zimbabweans who want to be South Africa are here already. And all of them have got O levels and A levels. And all of them are good in physics, in maths, and in English. Let's take them. Let them go teach with our teachers in our schools. Let the Zimbabwean O levels and A levels come and teach with our teachers in our schools. Let them do extra classes. Let them take them to the rural areas. Let them take them to the township schools. That is a five-year term. In the meantime, we must retrain our teachers. So our teachers, we must ask them, comrades, yeah, man. Also, some of you are not ready to teach, man. So let us take the test. You, comrade, no, you are not ready to teach. You must take, we must take care of them, but we must ask them to leave the teaching profession after five years. 
And then we start a revolutionary process of education because the Zimbabwean education is good technically, but it's not good ideologically. Now it's a safari from the colonial system. That is the proposal we put forward. Uh, I'm going to run through quickly. There's a proposal in the Black Agenda on marijuana, taha, cannabis, nzangu, motekwani, mpanje. The Black Agenda says that only colonial stupidity has kept marijuana uh, cr uh, criminalized. Colonial stupidity has kept this amazing, magical plant given to us by God criminalized. I must warn you black people, you don't know this. In America, USA today, 24 states have legalized marijuana. You don't know this and they are coming to take our stuff. The ANC and those who go to London will only agitate for the decriminalization of our plant when white people have found a way to colonize it. That day, without you know, Mutekwa is no longer now. You know, my comrade was arrested last week. My comrade was arrested last week, yeah, in the Val. Actually, fella, a small thing, or a honeu meditator. No, that thing pained me a lot, comrade. That comrade spent three, two nights in jail. That man spent two nights. Why? They, want, they wanted to smoke cigarettes. Because cigarettes are going to kill you. You're going to go to the hospitals. You're going to use their medicines. How is it possible? How is it? How is it that me and you can walk into a bottle store, any bottle store in the township now, they're full of bottle stores, and I can buy myself a full straw rum. Straw rum is like 94% alcohol. That thing will kill you. Why do you allow us to, to drink, but do not allow us to have access to this plant? We're not saying abuse it, comrades. I know some of my comrades also can abuse the plant. Let's meditate on it, but let us also know the healing powers of this plant. We demand, Black Agenda demands that it must all be known. And of course the unknown healing powers of the plant must be made public because they don't want to tell you. They must be made public. Ntsango is defiant. Mutekwane is revolutionary. It is stubborn. And I suggest to you, throw a seat anywhere in the city, in the village, in the township. Let it grow like the revolution that must grow. <laughs> on food security, we are, we are clear we are going to eat our own stuff. We must, we must start now. On Azania, the name, I, we don't want to waste time. The black agenda is clear. We are going to call this country Azania. But you can't just call it Azania. We must take the land back. Only when we have the land back and this place be called Azania. We don't want the name change. We want the return of our land. And once our land is retained, this place shall be known as Azania. Just look at Azania. Nga mepe wa Southern Africa, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Namibia, Azania, Mozambique. Wa uta di tamaka ofela ntoteo. Wa di wana ntoteo di tamaka ofela. Azania must be returned. We accept. And we also honor those who have fought over the years for the name Azania. We recognize the Pan-Africanist Congress of Ndadeso Bukwe for having called this land Azania. We recognize black consciousness. Yes, Steve Biko, which had must call this land Azania. Azapo li pie si banabesu ba ite haibitwe Azania. Lero onar li BLF relekele fati la batu wabatu haribite pleke ena Azania. Hampa harfie fela rinkile le fati la ru. The land must come, and Azania shall come. I'm talking to you, comrades, in the, in the, in the student sector. The 40th of the June 16th anniversary of the Black Power Movement. This year, we must do the Matthew 3, verse 11, emphasizing, in particular, the question of fire. fire. And Hoteke John, eh, hey, my colonial name is John. Na, Khalikibuwa, kere harengen lefati, 
kalle le ke magowa ho tshe ke ahlanya John Mukolobetsi ka jeno the students are very clear fees must fall roads must fall and many other such that this land belong to black people and the struggle must be led by black people and i want you to give yourself a big hand of applause today because more ba tsoka u fela we are blacks only we will discuss that matter uh, uh, comrade let's let's say also our country is under serious imperialist attack imperialism imperialism is attacking three uh, countries of the BRICS. go BRICS there we will have uh, brazil russia india and south africa we must understand what's going on in our country in brazil i'm sure you know the president there has been impeached by corrupt people in Brazil, corrupt people are leading the struggle against corruption because they want to get rid of the president there. Because white people in the world are very angry about BRICS. In South Africa, Msholoz is also under attack. Msholoz has got this problem. He's not exactly like the president of Brazil. But he supports BRICS. And they don't want BRICS to succeed. What they have done, they have come to our brothers and sisters in this country, in the opposition parties, and inside the ANC, to say the problem in South Africa must be changed. You must say the problem is Zuma and Gupta. In South Africa, they say we must fight against Msholozi and we must fight against Gupta. We must organize, Msholozi must fall, Gupta must go. Not only that, white people, whom we used to call part of Monopoly, white capital, such as Johan Rupert, are also saying the same thing. The problem in South Africa is Msholozi and it is Gupta. I will give you money. In fact, no, it didn't say give money. They must go. The revolutionary movements here, they said, Johan Rupert, give us money. Come. Work with us against Mshulus. I want you to warn you to show you something. If any black person here goes into alliance with our traditional enemies, white capital, Johan Rupert is the representative of what is a criminal. He is a warmonger. He is responsible for massacres. He is a thief. And he has maintained white supremacy in South Africa. If any of you today say we must go and have an alliance with your hand Rupert against Zuma, we must know that you are an agent of imperialism. Makwala a cheche, a cheche le moraho. Oye rona ba pelo se tata kopili. Oye rona, oye rona, oye rona ba pelo se tata ko. Oye rona, oye rona, oye rona, oye rona ba pelo se tata ko. Kafala makwala. Rona, oh yeah, Rona, oh yeah, Rona. Magola a cheche, a cheche le mora. Oh yeah, Rona, wa pelujeta. Oh yeah, Rona, oh yeah, Rona, oh yeah, Rona. Oh yeah, Rona. Salute. Leadership. Ke arabile tswa lo. Na re go mu. Ke ngwana wa se rurubele se konkwane. I have traveled. Kwezinyi ndao ba tshunkunze bofu. 
Welcome to Gauteng Province. Ejozi kwandonga ziyaduma kwanyama ayipheli kuphela amazinyo wendoda. Eh black people uh, it sounds all nice to be welcoming you to the gold and what what. Um, it's been an illusion. Meskulumange magic magic. Any of you that know your grandparents who've worked in the mines, none of you have inherited at least a doshiless knife that contains a bit of gold. That is the first illusion. That is the first lie uh, which began many, many years ago. We are not filling up <laughs> the dome, the stadiums. We are filling up the mind. This stolen land, number one, first and foremost, if I remember in the history class, they say there were three ships, not the one in the bottle store. Now, this one guy, I will not mention his name because this is a very sacred ground. Hence, we've got people uh, that we've put up inside here. Voga, Steve Pico Voga. Voga, Steve Pico Voga. Voga, Thomas Sankara Voga. Voga, Montomyama Voga. Voga, Taki Voga. I'm saying vulgar because everybody has been viva. We all been vivi. Right. To cut the matter straightforward. You see, that that boy who came with the three ships, he stole a horse back home. Now, in their foolishness, his punishment was not to put him in prison. They said, go and explore the world. Because they believed the world was flat. Because they didn't go to school in Africa. You see. Now, when he landed here, he wanted a favor. Then he took over the land. All of them together with the descendants. Let us fill up our minds. Uh, take the Sankofa bed. Take back the land. We take it step by step, leaders. So I welcome you to Johannesburg. I welcome you to Khaute. We have started, which was the difficult thing. It is going forward that we need to take what we've taken today, what, ha what the leaders have spoken. By all means necessary. Let us explore all options as a corner. Uh, but bottom line, we do not have an option. We have land that we must take back. Comrades, are you feeling alive? The reason I ask this is because today, uh, someone said this is a sacred space. There are thieves and criminals which are pasted outside. Uh, none of them are black, by the way. But for now, I'm going to call two of my leadership, the, uh, Comrade Yerushka and then uh, Comrade Zanele is going to introduce the leadership and then we're going to break. Uh, please, a big round of applause to our comrade, hard-working comrade, this one. All of our comrades are working hard to make this happen. Long live the revolutionary spirit of Thomas Sankara, long live. Long live the revolutionary spirit of Steve Biko, long live. Long live the revolutionary spirit of our black youth and our black families, long live. South Africa has approximately 58 million people. Four million of these people are white people, the rest are black people. Of the four million white people, we have one percent that control the economy and the land of this country and therefore own the power of the country and therefore own us. Of that 1%, two individuals, Rupert and Oppenheimer, their wealth equates more than half of the wealth of the South African population. That is over 26 million people. Two people have the wealth of 26 million people. Today, um, uh, d during the conference, during the Black Agenda um, conference, we'll be elaborating more on the politics of BLF. But it's, uh, it's my duty to give you the activities uh, of what we do. Theory is very important. Our, 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 our political um, 
our, our political line is black consciousness, um, it's pan-Africanist, we are inspired by Thomas Sankara, and we also have a, Sankara, a Sankofa um, a ethos, which means that in order to move forward, we also look back and learn from the revolutionary movements and the revolutionary philosoph uh, philosophies of our past. In terms of activities, there's two types of movements. There's movements who, who can, uh, can basically get a lot of people and keep us busy being busy. They're, they're, they are basically funded to keep us busy just towards voting for them to be into, uh, get into power. So they can get like 50,000 people to march to parliament, to hand a memorandum and go home. To march to the JSC and beg for, for, uh, for more loans instead of marching to the JSC and saying we want the economy back. And then there are political, uh, there, are, there are revolutionary movements who form their campaigns around first clarifying who is our enemy and then saying what direction do we use so that in this generation we are able to get the power to end oppression. In terms of the BLF, in the nice, ne, last nine months, we have firstly clarified that our, our, our enemy is white monopoly capital. It comes in the face of of, for example, Johann Rupert, the man that we've laid charges against, and I'll elaborate a bit on that later on. We have also clarified that in order for us to end our oppression as black people, we need to target, we need to target things that will take our power back. The reason why black people are oppressed in South Africa is because the people that, the people that oppress us have the power. The power they have is held in the land, and the economy. We're talking about the 1%. They own over 80% of the land in South Africa. They, their businesses equate to 97% of businesses in the JSC. How can black people have any power if we only have 3% of our businesses listed in the JSC? How can black people have power if we are literally tenants on this land? We are walking on private property of somebody else. They can literally evict us and put us in jail if we do anything wrong because they have that power. All our programs is, is centered on making people aware that we need to use our energies, our resources, our time, our hands and our minds to target white monopoly capital and to center ourselves around campaigns that will firstly conscientize people to know that our enemy is white monopoly capital. It's a few people we can target. Secondly, we need the economy back. And thirdly, we need the land back. The ownership of the land will give us dignity and power in order to create a new society that we can do whatever we desire with that power. Nine months ago, we laid charges, um, uh, uh, we, we, we exposed a, 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 a report called the CIEX report. This was done years ago. Basically, this report had elaborated that over 500 million, no, 500 billion rand was stolen through white corruption. This is not 256 million, this is 500 billion. That report is sitting with the public protector, and it's been sitting with her for years. But she refuses or is paid to ignore this report. What BLF has done is exposed the hypocrisy of our justice system, that it will go after small change but not target white capital, because white capital can do what they want, but only black people are corrupt in this country. The, 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 the evidence is there. What BLF has said is that the public protector must actually do her job and, 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 uh, and expose and give us the CIX report, basically. Once these white companies are exposed, tomorrow we can get at least 26 billion of that 500 billion. That 26 billion rand that we can get right now can be used towards youth development. The other campaigns that we've been very actively behind is called the Anti-Racism Action Forum. It laid, it laid uh, charges against Adrian Flock and uh, F.W. de Klerk. During apartheid, they sat in the Security Council that basically gave the go-ahead to torture our political prisoners and kill our political prisoners. Also, numerous massacres happened under 
their direction. They've killed women, they've killed children, they've, they've killed civilians, and they've killed some of the greatest minds in the country. Furthermore, during the TRC commissions, they never apologized. We are saying, through exposing de Klerk and through exposing AD and Flock, we are highlighting racism. Racism lies in who owns the power. If I have the power of the economy and the power of the land, if I own this country, I can make laws to make you do whatever I want you to do. And by me doing that, that power becomes racist power. If I want you to do what I want to do according to my, my culture or my race, that is racism. Racism is not like, I don't like the jersey that you wear, therefore, I think you're inferior to me. Unless you have the power to be able to implement laws to make you actually live an inferior life. There's going to be a, a, a racism, an anti-racism legislature that's going to be passed very soon. All the, all the political parties in parliament have one, one voice, and that voice is that racism should be criminalized, but they're not defining what racism is. Basically, that law is going to criminalize black people fighting for the land and economy. It's going to make it a criminal act for us to say that it's wrong for white people to own the land and economy. We also supported the Free Apple campaign. Uh, a free Apple prisoners campaign study, sorry, and um, and we did this through also joining the campaign, uh, uh, protests, um, through our, our political statements, and also uh, through activity in our of the anti-racism action forum. We've been um, on the ground during the Afrophobic attacks um, that really just, it's, it happens once or twice every year, but the, the, the center on black and black violence in South Africa. But uh, last year especially, it was, it was very gruesome um, and, and very violent. And, um, and while the other political leaders were uh, basically flip-flopping uh, around the issue of the Afrophobic attacks and black and black violence because they were too afraid to say things because they were too afraid that they're not going to get votes if they say the wrong thing. BLF was on the ground and BLF was very clear that this should stop. One of the other campaigns, um, as uh, our leader mentioned, was um, the, I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's uh, uh, recently um, the, the U.S. has, has bullied South Africa into importing chicken. The chicken that's coming from the U.S., we, it's basically, we call it cancer chicken because it's, it's pumped with so much of arsenic and so much of hormones that, that as the time goes by, it's going to break down our bodies, it'll break down our immune systems, we will fall into having many diseases, that together with our genetically modified vegetables. We're basically exposing our bodies to so many diseases, and this is not going to affect one person. It's going to affect all black people. It's going to affect 54 million black people in South Africa, because we don't have the money to buy proper food. <laughs> we were also one of the first, um, first organizations to lay charges against Penny Sparrow. These charges were also just to highlight the hypocrisy uh, well, to highlight what racism is. Penny, Sp Penny Sparrow basically, you know, called black people monkeys. But that's what South Africa teaches us to do, to believe that we are inferior and white people are superior. And she was just being honest. And we, we, we wanted to just highlight, not use her as, oh, she's a single uh, evil white person. No, this is how South Africa socializes us to believe in things. And if we want to end racism, we need to take the power back. Because a penny sparrow can tell me whatever she wants to about myself, about my culture, about my skin. It wouldn't matter if I actually have the power. But if I don't have the power, it does matter. Johann Rupert would Hopenheimer live in the UK. The money which they exploit black people and Black resources, they make that money, that money goes to their banks in the UK. Our political leaders, all of our political leaders in Parliament, our ministers that sit in Parliament in Lutuli House, before they make any decisions, 
they first consult. By the way, our constitution, before it was okayed, it first got its okay from the UK because the UK made sure that the constitution protected the rights of the white minority, their rights over the land, their rights over the economy. Johann Rupert basically, not just after 94, but during apartheid days, because he's the richest man in, in South Africa, he has always had control over the governments of South Africa. He has always had the state captured. South Africa is a business. It's not a home. He makes money out of us. So the, the government is used to make him money. When we talk about state capture, we want to expose that state capture does exist, but that state capture actually starts with white monopoly capital, and Johann Rupert is at the center of it. We push a lot of our BLF politics through black opinion, and all of, our, all of the articles is black-centered. We've also supported the Buy Black campaign. We don't do that because we want to join having uh, black people imitate white people. We, we support the buy black, buy black campaign because we need our people to want to take over the economy. And this is one of the steps that we're going to move towards doing that. One of the important things uh, I think about as a so-called female person um, is that our, our movement is a, a feminist movement. And I say feminist not, just, not because as a coordinator I'm female and the deputy leader Zanele Luana is also female. That's not, that does not make us feminist. The reason I say that we are a revolutionary feminist movement is because we don't mince our words. We want power. We don't want charity. We don't want nice gifts. We want power. When we have power, then we can create a better society. When women have equal share in the power through owning the land, through owning the economy, then we as, as, as women can create a, a, a better society that, is, that, is, that ends patriarchy and ends racism. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that our programs are black-centered, our programs are, are land-centered. We direct our programs to the real enemy, white monopoly capital, the people that own the land, the people that own the economy, the people that basically create our jobs and fire us from jobs and put us in certain spaces that we can't live good lives. In order to, we are living in under 340, 364 years of oppression. And the only way that we can stop that is if we unite around black-centered, land-centered programs. And those are the programs of BLF. The most revolutionary politics in South Africa, in the continent, and in the world because it is black-centered. We understand racism, we understand capitalism, and we understand what needs to be done for us to end oppression. But we need people who are more pragmatic. We need our people on the ground and to help us to organize. We need coordinators and administrators to help us to get our people together to certain places so that we're not going to go and hand a memorandum and go back home. When we do something, we want an impact, either to conscientize or to bring something down. This is, this is my call out. If you want to join BLF, and if you are a very practical person, and if you are, if you are theoretical and you, you speak beautiful politics, you have a space. But yeah, I'm, I'm, as a coordinator, I'm looking for people who can organize, people who are administrators. Please give me a call. Thanks. I'm the Deputy National Convener for the Black First Land First Movement. So my task here is very simple. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be introducing the leadership seated here. Um, okay, let me start. So, leadership, I'm going to just ask you to stand up ne, when I introduce you so that the delegation can see um, who am I introducing. So, there on my far left is Luazin Dombela. Um, he is based in the KZN province, KwaZulu Natal. He is our deputy national coordinator for BLF. Uh, 
She is our national treasurer for the Black Face Land Face Movement. Lindsay Mustop. He is our national secretary for student affairs. Comrade Andile Mutama, our national convener for the Black Face Land Fest movement. And then we have AB, who is a member of the Provincial Coordinating Committee for the Gauteng Province. And Yerushka Cheti, our national coordinator for BLF. Ngadisa Mbemnyama, our national leader for political education for the Black First Land First Movement. Vusim Songo, coordinator of Mpumalanga province. We have Harold Mabinda, um, additional member of the Provincial Coordinating Committee for Mpumalanga province. And then we have Alan Galanga, um, the Secretary for Student Affairs, Mbumalanga Province. Sipomata, the Deputy Convener for the Provincial Coordinating Committee, Mbumalanga Province. The National Coordinating Committee member, um, based in KwaZulu Natal, Dumisani Ngubane. Comrade Botsang Molwa, member of the Provincial Coordinating Committee, Gauteng Province. And we have Vuyo Mkaba, our coordinator for the Eastern Cape Province. And we have Tamsang Mkaba, our convener for Western Cape Province. We have Comrade Bandile Mzalose, the coordinator for KwaZulu Natal Province. And uh, our MC, yes, Menzi Maseko, member of the National Coordinating Committee for the Black First Land First Movement. I thank you. Uh, many people have asked the elder why he carries a rod. Once upon a time, I was a priest in something called the Nyabingi Order of Black Supremacy for the Redemption of Black People from Babylon. In that little, it's a short, quick, quick thing. I won't waste time. Um, but when I left the theocratic order, I, I heard recently on Facebook that the pastor is no longer uh, doing some church activities. Myself, for eight years, I was a priest in this Naya Pingi order. My dreadlocks used to be longer than this. I used to smoke chalice all the time. But not just chalice. I used to, re, I used to preach black consciousness and black power everywhere. All over the world, in fact. But when I left the Naya Pingi order, because I was like, hey, why we keep talking about Israel and Ethiopia and Israel and Jerusalem and New Zion? I said, hey, the power is within us. All these leaders that have come before us have endowed us with the black power to do things for ourselves. Marcus Garvey said you can do things for yourself. Even Haile Selassie, even though he's problematic. Yeah, Rastas, yeah. Our guy was problematic. Uh, he also said, you can do everything for yourself. Bigo said it. So when I left, I met these people called Amatongo. Some of them are alive, some of them are not. Um, they endowed me with this rod. They sent a lady by the name of Lungi Lekumbi. Lungi Lekumbi said, Elder, I don't know, I'm a youth. I'm only 38 years old. But he said, Elder, I had three dreams of you. Now you get to know the story. I had three dreams of you. One dream, I walked up the bush near uh, uh, Ukashamba, they call Drunkensburg, the whites. Ukashamba River, Ukashamba Mountains. I was looking for a special wood to pick, and I picked a particular wood and I gave it to you. I did not know why. Second dream, I was walking down Umgeni River, and I tripped on a something, a, a particular wood, and I picked it up. In my third dream, I saw you, Ungnia Itans. Nella's Itans, my comrade. I Utans. Now let's give a quick Zulu lesson. There's a very diff big difference between Utans and Netans. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 
I gave her itansi. I did not give her utansi. Itansi is that mattress that you use for utansi. So, uh, when, the, when the beautiful uh, uh, Sangoma lady gave me the stick, I did not give her a stick. She gave me the stick. Yeah. Yeah, we are all elders here. Okay, so she gave me this and she said to me, you will find out soon how many white supremacists you are going to have to put to death using this rod. Myself, being a person of Itongo, I am a person who dreams things and I see them and they happen. Even Andy, I've told him many things about himself, besides the lotto, uh, which is not going to get. Oh, MMM, but that's another story. The plane has, uh, has left. The plane has left, comrades. This rod has already started doing its work. It's got symbols of the ank on it. Below is an ank, green ank. It's an ank at the bottom. It's an ank at the top. Comrades, do you know what the ank symbolizes? What does it symbolize? Life. What kind of life? Uh, comrades, Nikon, what does the ank symbolize? All right. What does a Sankofa bed in front of your shirt symbolize? Let's see if you are reading play what we are working hard to produce. What does the bed in front of you, which is a fist, which is a pen, what does it symbolize, comrade? Angezo. Learn from your past. In order to do what? In order to move forward and, play, and dare to invent the future. Sankara, I say black power. Yes.
please go to the commission. That commission is going to be led by Comrade Luazi, if I'm not mistaken. Wait. No, 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 wait. <laughs> the students, the student movement is important to. We, are, we want to hear from you. When are we launching formally this student movement? That commission of a program of action, you must tell us when we are going to occupy land and where and what resources we need. Do we need to take um, 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 arms struggle or not? These kind of things uh, you need to, to, to think about. You know, uh, leaders, I want you all to give yourself a big hand for not just being here and driving all the night, but sitting in commissions and you are still here. We said we are going to be a movement of big revolutionary black ideas. And I was in some of the commissions just listening a little bit, the quality of the contributions give me confidence that we are building a movement which will take the black agenda forward. We are doing very well, uh, leaders, uh, from that point of view. Pastor Kolas Kosana had said some things which are very important that we must remember. In the same way that Sister Bev Dittier has said things we must remember, let's start with some of the important contributions of U Sister Bev Dittier. Our movement cannot be found to be abusive towards other black people. We can abuse women. We, we must unlearn being patriarchs. We must give our women liberators and warriors their rightful positions and we must be led by them when they have been able to show capacity to lead. This movement must be a place where we feel safe, all of us. We all love each other and we shall protect each other. This movement must be a movement of black love. Black people, when they are harassed by the system out there, when they are harassed by white people and politicians out there, they need to know that they can come here and they shall be protected. And if white people and the white system harm any of us, if some black person says, I was in that place and those white people harmed me, it is our duty, it is our job to defend those black people and go sort out those white people. Let our enemies fear us. The problem in South Africa is that our enemies know nothing is going to happen to them. A judge can call us all rapists. We rape our children and our women and so a white judge and they know nothing is going to happen to them. So we must start making things happen to our enemies. The second point relates to Pastor Kolas Kosana's input. I want just to take one. 
SPLF, let us take the job of unifying the Pan-Africanist organizations and the Black Consciousness organizations seriously. We are going to build as a... We as BLF, let us make it our job. Leaders, I'm not going to lie to you. It is not an easy job. It is not going to be an easy job. But let us do it. Let us do it every single day, every single month, every single year. Let us have an action around the land question. Opo kobe pia isi ba utandu msaba. Om nyaman baka biko ba utandu msaba. Let us call these people together and say, okay, even if you are still different organizations, can we unite on a program to take back the land? Let us all agree as Pan-Africanist Black Consciousness organizations, we have a month of taking back the land. We can choose. Pal, Porto, there. You are not far from Johan Rupert. Please sort that farm out. Others on this side, there's Kukuni. Barabaha's Kukuni school fought with those white people. Let us go take the land. And so on and so forth until they know there's one national action for land and it shall be led by all of us, those who say Biko and those who say Sobukwe.